For as long as I can remember, I have been utterly intrigued and fascinated by abandoned places and structures, especially the towns of Chernobyl and Pripyat. I'll never forget the first time I learned of the Chernobyl disaster. I knew at that time I had to and was absolutely going to visit someday. On most abandoned crawls, you are likely presented with some kind of risk. Your stomach drops as you feel the damp wooden floorboards sink a little as you take a step, hoping it won't collapse beneath you. You trip over a brick on the floor, your hand landing inches from what seems like the sharpest piece of broken glass you've ever seen. Your heart pounds as you peer around a corner into a room darker than the night and hope someone isn't hiding inside. Chernobyl presents itself with a different kind of danger, one that sets it apart from anywhere in the world, a lethal but invisible danger. In this series, I will be taking you deep inside one of the most radioactive areas of the world, the Exclusion Zone, through the town of Chernobyl, up close to reactor number four, and finally, exploring the infamous and entirely abandoned town of Pripyat. Welcome back to the second part of the Chernobyl series. In this part, we will be exploring deep inside the inner exclusion zone, up close to reactor number four, and then on to explore inside an abandoned school. First, we will talk about something that I find extremely fascinating relating to reactor number four. To this day, reactor number four houses the deadliest object known to man, the elephant's foot. The elephant's foot is a two metric ton pile of corium, which contains nuclear fuel, uranium, metal, sand, and melted concrete. It is 10 times less radioactive than when the accident occurred However, it will still provide a lethal dose of radiation within 300 seconds of exposure and will remain radioactive for the next 100,000 years. It emits so much radiation that attempts to take photos of it have resulted in distorted and grainy photos as well as completely destroying cameras themselves. There are only a handful of photos of this object. We started off the next part of the tour by learning about the five reactors in the area. Reactors number 1 to 3 remained functioning until 2000. Reactors 5 and 6 were in the process of being built at the time of the accident. They were left abandoned. Since then, another massive safe confinement was built and slid over the reactor, which has robot technology inside to start destroying the reactor. The demolition efforts are scheduled to begin next year. So the reactors 1 and 2 was cooled down also together with cooling pond, but you can see that they separated in different buildings. Second stage was the reactor 3 and reactor 4. These two reactors was already in one building, but in different part of the building. And the third stage was reactor number 5 and 6, they was unfinished before the accident, and cooling towers for those two reactors. After the disaster, Soviet Union cleaned the territory. They like wash almost all of the buildings here. Some of the buildings they restore and build one more time. All the soil and pavement they cut down and remove to the special burial site. So all everything what we can see here was washed. The clean soil from the clean territory of Ukraine was removed here. Because in six months, in 1986, they restored reactors one and two. And in one year, in 1987, when they built special separation wall between the reactor number 3 and reactor number 4, the separation wall was 8 meter of concrete to protect the workers who will work in reactor number 3 itself from the high levels of radiation because the concrete can't completely stop the gamma rays but gamma rays can lose almost all of the power inside of the concrete and when they go out from the concrete their rates are 1 micro zeros per hour it's totally normal to work one working shift like around 7 hours per day for the workers of reactor number 3 we continued on the road and went through another checkpoint to enter the 10 kilometer exclusion zone and then headed towards the reactors 
We drove by a cooling river and saw where the construction of reactors five and six were beginning and made our way to reactor number four. In the next part of the tour, we began our abandoned endeavors. We pulled off the side of the road to an old kindergarten schoolhouse. From the road, you could barely see it due to the nature overgrowth. The school was safe to enter because the brick building was able to be cleaned after the disaster. It also helped shield the radiation during the disaster. Stepping off the concrete path into the dirt, however, was a different story. Like now we have 0.94, close to the soil, two, Three, ten, eight, around eight point four, eight point six microzeros per one hour. Because it many times more than normal. The normal rate only zero point thirty microzeros per one hour. So it's not dangerous. This rate is totally fine to stay here to take some pictures, but to live here one more time, it's totally impossible. This was one of the creepiest schools I have ever seen. In the next video, we will be getting even creepier by exploring multiple structures deep inside the entirely abandoned city of Pripyat, as well as go up close to a secret Soviet spy radar antenna that's longer than a football field and dates back to the Cold War. Thank you for watching part two of the series. Stay tuned for the third and final part of the Chernobyl series.